Well, today is a very special day. Uh, it's called by a lot Good Friday. This is Easter weekend. And of course, today I want to take a little more time than I've normally been taking just a few moments because today we want to talk about the cross. The cross is a very important part of this weekend. Uh, and I want to make sure that we cover it really well. I'm going to begin reading at Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. Again, we're glad that you've tuned in with us for this weekend. And uh, there have been a lot of changes, as you know, uh, people not being, a, being in buildings and uh, uh, a lot of nice Easter clothes that people will be wearing and things of that nature. But today, the preaching of the cross is a very important part of our Christianity. And so from Luke chapter 23 and verse 39 through 43, I want to just read a little bit about the three crosses. Then one of the criminals who were hung blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other, answering, rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, I want that to really stick in your mind. He called him Lord. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. As I read these scriptures and other scriptures before to Good Friday services, uh, I realized that there were three crosses on that hill that day and uh, I want to talk about three things that are responses to the cross and I also want to talk about being on the right side and the wrong side of the cross. I believe that this is how humanity looks. There is the right side of the cross and then there's the wrong side of the cross. So as we look, we look at the three crosses and we see one cross, we see a, a man who uh, is rejecting the Lord. Notice this particular thief. He has no mission of guilt. He's not interested in admitting anything that he's done wrong. He's just mad. He's mad because he got caught. He has what is called a worldly sorrow, which is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. In other words... He's not sorry, his sorrow is not because of what he's done, but he's offended that people would make him be accountable for his sin. But the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 7, 10, the sorrow of the world worketh death, because it is a sorrow, again, that is, is why, did, why is this happening to me? Well, I am, I am convinced that that's the wrong kind of sorrow. But then there's a sorrow of repentance. And this is the second thief. He feared God. He knew that God was in control of his destiny. He knew that God was the judge of all things. He realized that he was a condemned man with no earthly way out. Notice his words in verse 40. Seeing thou art in the same condemnation. He acknowledges we are justly here. We're, we're here because we put ourselves here. He acknowledged that he deserved the sentence that he received. For the deeds that he had done. His sorrow was a different type of sorrow. His was a godly sorrow. And we need to realize that this kind of sorrow... And, and there's a lot of people today who don't realize that a godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. So there is a sorrow today that brings us to repentance, to where we want to turn our lives around. We want to realize that God's the only way out. When he uttered these words, 
He also used that very powerful word that we mentioned when we were reading the verses. He said to Jesus, Lord. He was giving him that title of deity. He was saying, Lord, I want you to know that I know that you're not doing this for your own sin, but you're doing it for the sins of all mankind. So we see that this kind of uh, rejection came from the first guy, but we see this response. That's the word I was looking for. He's responding to the Lord. And this is the kind that brings what we really need to find today and this weekend, and that is redemption. See, the cross is a buying back. It buys us back from the sin that we got ourselves into. It's kind of like being in a market as a slave and, and you get bought. Years ago, I remember reading about a story about a little boy who had made this boat and it take, took him a long time to make it. And it's a beautiful boat. And uh, he went to try it out, but he went and tried it out in a place where there was water that was moving very quickly. And so he put the boat down in the water and next thing you know, it got away from him. He couldn't catch up with it. And finally it went out of sight and he had lost his boat. Well, months later, he happened to be walking and saw in a store window his boat. He walked in and told the man, he said, Sir, I want you to know that boat that you have in the window, that's, that's my boat. And the man said, Well, son, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I bought that from someone and I, I just cannot give you that boat. And he says, Well, will you hold it for me? I'd like to buy it. So he went and did all kinds of chores. He did everything from mowing grass to cleaning windows to cleaning basements out, everything he could. Finally, he came to the man and he put the money on the table and he said to the man, I want to buy my boat. And the man said, sure. And so he gave him a receipt and he walked away with his boat. Well, when he stepped outside of the store, he started talking to his little boat. And he said, little boat, you are doubly mine. One, you're mine because I made you. But two, you're mine because I bought you. We need to realize there is a God who not only made us, but he bought us. And there's a lot of scriptures that we can find. Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. There's that word, redemption. Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And then Colossians 1.14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. That's what Good Friday is all about. It's about a God who redeemed us with his own blood. Peter goes on to say in 1 Peter 1.18, with the precious blood of Jesus uh, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. So today, as I bring this to a conclusion this Good Friday, I want you to know today that there's a God who wants to buy us. He's already created us. And He wants us to know that He wants us to have a salvation <coughs> that is complete. What do you mean by complete? Well, there's a lot of people who do a lot of good things. But let me tell you something. It reminds me about being in Bible college and seminary, uh, turning in a, a paper, and, and I had done a lot of good work on the paper. And uh, I got the paper back expecting a high mark. But finally I got a low mark, and I was like, what, what just happened? I did this paper, and the instructor told me, he said, you did good work, but it was the wrong assignment. There's a lot of people doing a lot of good work today, but it's the wrong assignment. See, our assignment is not just to be somebody who's good or somebody who is helpful, but it's the assignment of knowing that we have been born in sin and we need to repent and we need to be baptized for all those sins, for the remission of those sins, for forgiveness of sins in the name of Jesus Christ. And then we also need to realize if we're going to turn away from this old life, and have a new life, they're going to have to have the Holy Spirit in our lives. And that's what Peter said in Acts 2.38. He told us that Jesus Christ would redeem us, that he would buy us back, but we needed to repent. And I pray today that this is a time that you will look this weekend and realize repentance is very important. I know some of you have wondered about communion, and uh, communion is something that I believe personally is something that I think is very personal. Uh, I've actually actually went to people's homes before and gave them communion. We've had communion in our building. 
Uh, I've been with other ministers for communion. But one of the things that I think is very unique about communion, and, and that some people don't get, it was something that Jesus sat down and personally did with those men. And I want you to know that I'm praying that this virus will be something that we'll be able to get back together personally and take that cup together. Uh, I, I know that we could sit down today and uh, you could make a steak and I could make a steak and we could Zoom each other and we could watch each other eat a steak and, and that'd, be, that'd be fine. I'd still eat the steak and you'd still eat the steak. But really, if I want to enjoy the fellowship with you, I'm going to wait till the weather gets a little warmer and we can get a little bit closer, maybe not uh, a foot away. Maybe they're going to make us keep at least four feet away at some time to at least walk over and get your corn on the cob and your steak or whatever. But I think that that is a very personal thing and looking forward to doing that personal thing with you. And hopefully we'll be able to do it by the time Pentecost comes because to the early church, uh, something that was very important to them was the Passover. And that's why we're talking that about Good Friday. But what's going to be very important to us is Pentecost. And like I said, I'm, I'm looking forward to a most, one of the most powerful Pentecost. People actually coming, taking communion, uh, being filled with the Spirit, people being baptized. I want all that. But in conclusion, let me say today that there's two sides of the cross. There's the rejection side and there's the reception side. And I pray today that you understand that you have to choose which side you're on. It's a choice. You can either acknowledge your sin before God. And let me tell you this, that all people are talking about a lot of prayer right now. But the Bible lets us to know that if God is going to hear our prayers, it's a prayer of a person who is saying, God, I want to acknowledge that I need your help, that I need to turn from sin. And so today, I can just say to this to you again, we need to obey that full plan of salvation, repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. And then we need to back it up with a life that is separated, a life that is sanctified, that is saying, you know what, God, I want a holy life. Because really, when Jesus said to the man, today will be with me in paradise, he was telling him, I'm taking you to a place where sin should not be rampant in your life. It should be a place where there's a change in your life. I don't know about you. When I look out these doors, I don't see paradise. But I can tell you what, when I get into his presence, I feel that holy presence of God. I feel like praising him and worshiping him. And that's what we're going to be doing on this weekend for Easter. We're going to be doing a lot of praise choruses and, and singing about the resurrection. But today is Good Friday, and I pray that you'll take a very solemn time and, and call upon God and remind him that you know that you're a sinner, but you also know that he is the Lord who died for you and can forgive you of all those sins. Again, we look forward to being with you on, on Easter and uh, do try to uh, enjoy the weather outside and let the Lord just bless and minister in your life. In Jesus' name, again, thank you for tuning in for this devotion today.